you are on to a life transforming experience as Pastor Prince Abba brings you God's word the deep insights and power. God bless you. This morning I began to show us some things. It was a prophetic service this morning and this evening also. I began to open our eyes to gaining insight and understanding into the purpose for prophetic prayers especially when it has to do or relates to um, taking territories and taking cities uh, so um, I'm actually teaching on taking new territories through prayer through prophetic prayer and um, this is important because prayer is the womb of the spirit everything that will be given birth to in the natural world or in the physical world will be first conceived in the spiritual world so prayer is that womb of the spirit where you conceive God's program for your life and that's where you also give birth to God's program and God's vision for your life then when you match certain actions in the physical, you can create that thing practically. But the journey begins with first praying. Now let me establish some truths. Lord, we ask for all trans in this service. And Lord, we pray that everybody would receive the spirit of simplicity, of understanding, simplify everything we are going to be talking about now for comprehensive understanding in Jesus name we pray now what I'm showing you if you get it and if you begin to do it you would become so different from the way you are currently I've always said this thing that every nation and every generation and every dispensation actually has a program from heaven for them and God will not permit the birth of anybody if God does not have a program and a purpose for that person. If God does not have any plan, if God does not have any reason for why you, are, you should be born, there's no reason why you should have been born. So, this is how this thing works. Before you were born, God already determined why you were going to be born. And he already developed the blueprint, developed the picture and everything you're going to be doing here in this world. But you need to understand that every time someone is born, hell takes note of the person. Because nobody is just born to be alive or to just exist. Everybody is born to be great. You need to understand that. Whether you are dealing with individuals now or you are dealing with anything, whether it's ministry now as it is, as it were, everything that exists on the earth created by God is existed for greatness. See, is existing for greatness. For instance, if I ask you now to tell me in just few minutes what God's plan for your birth was, you'll be so shocked that you might not even have a detailed grasp or a detailed understanding of what it is. But you know when you begin to approach God's throne, pray and begin to ask him to unveil to you his purpose and his program, you'll be so shocked that you're not an ordinary person. If God will ever open your eyes to see who you really are, you'll be so shocked you're not ordinary. You're not. That's why you must understand that the journey of your life is a journey of 247 contention. Contention. There are forces. So There are forces that are programmed intentionally they are wired strategically positioned to make sure that you die ignorant of who you are they will fight let me give a few examples and all these things i'm saying is just to establish a foundation so that when we begin to pray you will pray earnestly you need to begin to engage warfare prayers so that you will not leave this world regretting that you did not fulfill your dreams regretting that you did not fulfill your calling regretting you didn't fulfill the assignment of god for your life Do you know, for instance, as a church, and I can show you from scriptures, that part of the reason we are here as a church, God gave us as a gift to
to the world. Do you know the greatest gift that God gave the world is the gift of the church. That's the gift of you and me. If you're a Christian, you are the greatest gift God has given humanity. A Christian is not just somebody who goes to church and pray, sing, dance and go home. A Christian is a gift to his world. The church is the greatest gift of God to any generation, to any nation. The gift of God to the believer is the Holy Spirit. But the gift of God to the nation is the church. And let me tell you, whether it is for individuals now or whether it's for the church as an organization, anytime God gives a special gift to a generation, the forces of hell will break loose to stop that individual or stop that commission from fulfilling her purpose. So, see this. You are put on this world to hold stewardship of this earth for God. Hmm. Can I tell you something? The Bible said the heavens are the heavens of the Lord. He said, but the earth has it given to the children of men. This earth, this earth that you walk on, and you just feel your one person existing belongs to your father in heaven. And God gave it to his children to hold it in trust for him. There is a portion of this whole earth that God created and willed to you to take care of it for him. Hmm. Do you know how I wake up every morning? I wake up knowing that this boy state, for instance, is a portion of the earth God created. And many others so Because this thing is as far as your eyes can see. You, you believe God for territories. It's as far as your eyes can see. Every morning I wake up, there's something I know in my heart. What is that thing I know? That God puts me in a boy state as his watcher here. God put me in a boy state as his gatekeeper here. God carved a portion of the earth called a boy. And he said to me, please, man over this territory for me. Look after this territory for me. Make sure nothing goes wrong here. There are some of you God created and he said, concerning the entertainment industry, this is my part of the earth. And I'm giving you, maybe it might not be global law, maybe it might be Nigeria. Maybe it might even be a locality in the boy state. The issue is not about the size. Is are you faithful in that area where you put it? It could give you that industry, that entertainment industry or ministry or whichever business, whatever it might be. And he says, as my child, hold brief Still word over this. Because God is in heaven. But the earth also belongs to him. He's not here. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. <laughs> so anytime anything goes wrong in a boy. I'm not looking for who to blame. Because I know who God gave a boy. God didn't give a boy to the politicians. As you may be thinking. He gave a boy to the church. He gave Nigeria, he gave the church to Nigeria, gave Nigeria to the church. And when I'm, I'm talking about church, I'm not talking about beauty, you know. I'm talking about these people who are bought by the precious blood of Jesus, you and I. So let me start by showing you a scripture because listen, in 15 minutes I'll be done with this teaching. We'll pray and go. You need to now catch a bigger program for life. When you get it, you understand what I'm saying. I won't push you from without your everything will change. You will stop existing. You will now become practically intentional. You become so intentional about life. You will stop. You will stop existing. Psalm chapter two. Let me show you something. Then I will now show you how we can begin to engage prayers to take territories. Everybody sitting now here, you represent one territory. The issues that you may not know. Me, I know my own. But you represent one territory. Do you know the Bible says in the book of Romans, the next expectation of creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. The whole earth is groaning. The whole earth is wailing. The whole earth is waiting for your manifestation. Do you know how serious that statement is? 
Do you see the statement of Esther? When the king declared that every Jew was going to be put to death. You know that Haman's plot, if you read your Bible. The plot of Haman to destroy the entire Jews in Israel. Millions of them. And Esther stood in the gap and declared a fast across the land and asked that everybody should pray and intercede for her. She was also going to pray and also fast. There was a statement she made backing up what she said. She said, for who knows, I could have been born for such a time as this. Let me give you an example. Let, let me, I don't want to use this one, but just let me use it because that's the wave in the air now. That's what everybody is uh, crying about and asking God to do for them. <laughs> let me use Peter Obi as an example. I use him in the morning. Let me use him as an example now. Can you imagine that in this country, over 100 million people's hope is on one man now? Over 100 million people are hoping. Nigeria has about 200 and something million. So let's just divide the number into two. Let's assume there are 100 million don't want him. But let's now see 100 million people who really want him to be president. How can that number of people depend on one man? So imagine that Peter will be died as a child. It's not just that the man, a, a man died. What happened is that the whole generation will be lost. Imagine the revolution of Nelson Mandela, for instance, in, uh, what do you call it? South Africa. Hello? Do you see how a whole, a whole nation was dependent on one man to salvage it from apartheid? Imagine Magandhi of India. Imagine Martin Luther King Jr., for instance. Okay, imagine that Martin Luther King Jr. died as a baby. Maybe by now, America will still be suffering racism. Do you know every time God wants to do something in a nation, the Bible always says, and I sought for a man. Not two men, sometimes it's one man. Is I sought for a man that will stand in the gap and that will, first standing in the gap is first intercession, praying. I sought for a man. Do you know how important you are to God? How strategic you are to God? You're the one who is abusing yourself. You're the one who is looking down on yourself. You're the one who is thinking low of yourself. You're the one who feels you don't matter. You're just existing. Hmm. Come, sir. I want you to do your hand like this. Show them. Do you see the marks on his hand? Do you see his thumbprint? Do you know in this whole world you will find a second person in a world of more than 9 billion people about 9 billion people you will find a second person dead or alive or yet to be born with the exact fingerprint that he has. What kind of intentional God is this? There's nothing God has no use to explain how unique you are. Yet most of us can't catch it. That is why if you see yourself operating lesser than you should operate in the scheme of God's program for your life, it means there's something containing your life. People don't behave the way they behave because that's the way, you know, they were born to act and behave. They are forces. They are forces. This world is spiritual. They are things. They are things. If you see yourself living below your fullest expectation, living below your full capacity, don't just think it's because you are disadvantaged, maybe because of the family you are born. Sometimes, even the family you are born into and the things that your family suffer is also a plan from the devil to withstand, to, to, to put a blockade on what you are carrying. Now, sometimes, I've seen families Maybe the father and mother, they were doing well. Everything was working. Then the arrival of one baby, bam. And things start going tough for the family. Everything goes 
maybe the father even loses his life. Some things happen at that point. Maybe the mother even maybe divorce hit at the, the early stage of the marriage. This boy has just been born or get something just happens at the end of the day. Maybe the parents are no longer together. They separate. Serious quarrel fire. And you can explain it. A destiny enter the house. And the, the reason why sometimes it happens is so that that child will not have good upbringing. It was at the point that Moses was going to be born to deliver the entire that there was a legislation in the whole of Egypt. Kill all the Hebrew young men. Kill them all. The target was not to just kill. It was Moses. The devil saw ahead of time. Can I even give an example? Even Jesus, your Lord and Savior, was born and then do you know that there was pressure everywhere was they were doing census that period so the whole hotels were full places were open they couldn't find a place where this boy could be born imagine the cost of carrying this boy up and down carrying that pregnancy up and down something happened maybe an accident or armed robbers attacked them and they shot the woman or something just happened and that whole pregnancy was destroyed at that point so you see all the resistance sometimes you are having in your life. Sometimes you go to some places, you are expecting favor, certain things should happen in your destiny. You want to get some things done. But it looks like the more you are trying, the more you are hitting the ceiling. Understand, the weight of your calling will be tested by the weight of your resistance. Oh, I don't know if I'm talking. The, the size of your calling will be tested. Sometimes how you will know what your calling is big is check the battles hanging around your life. Check the battles hanging around your life. You will now know that you're not a normal person. For Jesus, a boy who has just been born, innocent boy, who knows nothing, Herod now declares war and said, kill every two-year child down. Kill them all. For one small boy. What is that agitation? Can I tell you, everything that comes from God is Satan's enemy. I hope you know that Satan's number one enemy is God. Hmm? Should I establish it further? Hmm? That everything that comes from God is God's, is Satan's enemy. When God created Adam, that day Adam was created was when the devil recruited another enemy. I don't know if you've ever had a situation where somebody doesn't like maybe your dad. Your dad and somebody is having quarrel. Serious quarrel. And maybe you went to an office to get a job and the person who is going to give that job is the one you're having a quarrel. You've seen things like that. Your dad is having a serious quarrel with. And the, the person doesn't know you. But you just walked into the office and submitted your CV. And the person looked at the name and saw your son name. And said, this name sounds familiar. Who is your father? And you mention your father's name. He said, eh. Anyway, you have good qualifications, but I'm sorry you can't get the job. You didn't offend this man. It's your father that offended him. Why did he transfer the, uh, the offense? You did Satan nothing. The issue Satan has with, is with God. It's not you that dethroned him from heaven. It was him and God that had his issue. But God is your father. All his children are enemies of Satan. <laughs> Hello, somebody. I'm trying to help you to be conscious so that from henceforth you begin to become conscious of the fact that you're not just existing. You have a calling on your life. You have a destiny on your life. And the battles you're going to face are only oppositions withstanding your destiny and withstanding what God wants to do with you. I've seen too many people spoil. God told me one time, He said, you see all this human race, every human being that I gave birth to, that are allowed to be alive in this world. He said, not one of them was created or born to be useless. He said, not anyone. He said, the issue is that many of them came through different avenues where you see a lot of things went wrong a lot of things went wrong and it looks like destiny was stolen 
But there's not one person that was ever born. I give an example now. Some people came through the wrong family. Not because there's anything wrong with the child, I bet. But because somehow something went wrong in the family system. And this person missed his destiny there. Let me ask you a question. I have a daughter, a very beautiful girl at home. Let me assume that that lady was even created and born to fail. Let's assume she was born to be a lunatic, a bad girl, a gangster. Let's assume that is even what she was born for. Do you think with a parent like me that that can happen? You know why? Because everything she needs to develop into the f- the best lady in the world is already available for her. She has the right kind of father. He knows what to do to develop that kind. Everything, the kind of school she needs to go to to get all the kind is already available for her. Not so many people had that privilege. Yes, Yet, they were not born to fail. This is why church is important. So that when you come to church, if there's anything somehow you miss somewhere in your development, church helps you to correct it. It doesn't matter what has wasted in your life. It doesn't matter the things you have not had. The things that you've done wrong, maybe you have wasted your life in some kind of funny living. You were born into poverty. Your background was very, you know, bad or is very bad. Your, your parents didn't even know God. Maybe something just happened somehow. I have good news for you. God can still restore. Your journey to greatness can begin even now. I ask you a question. Why was God looking for Joseph and Mary to bring Jesus through to the world? Because if Jesus had been born in a reckless family, things would have gone wrong. Why was Joseph from the family of Jacob? Why? Why did Esther have to be mentored by Mordecai? Why did Ruth have to have a mother-in-law like Naomi? Check all these biblical examples I'm giving you. Why is it that Isaac had to have a father like Abraham? Check all those heroes in the Bible that we have something to learn from, something powerful. Why was Moses born and then taken to the river and Pharaoh's daughter had to come take him into the palace? That's the number one miracle. Second miracle is that a Hebrew woman, which is a mother, his mother, that understands how to nurse a baby in the fear and culture of God, had to come and submit herself as nanny to help Pharaoh's daughter raise the baby. So while the boy was having a royal experience, a palace and a kingly life experience, having the best of education and training, the mother was helping raising the morality of the boy. Because inside Egypt's palace, there are some corruptions there. But you can't rule away the fact that that's where you have the best of education. The slaves didn't have access to that. The slaves didn't have access to that kind of life the Egyptians had. They didn't have access to the palace life. They didn't have access to the best of education. They didn't have access to royalty. But God is now looking for a deliverer that will deliver Israel from slavery. He's not going to pull that deliverer from the camp of the slaves. Though that deliverer will have the same identity as the Hebrew guys, but the way he's going to be raised will be different from how these ones are raised. I believe when you walk into a church like this is because you have a great destiny. Mm. Do you even know the Bible say he set up their solitaries in families, spiritual family, that the best gift God can give you when you are saved is the gift of spiritual parenting. Hmm. I will give you pastors after my heart that will feed you with knowledge. So how God shows you he loves you is that he gives you his best. I don't know that you know I'm God's best. <laughs> yeah, I know what I'm telling you guys. Yeah. I don't take people who sit under me for granted. Though. That's why you see, no matter how a person comes, no matter how a person looks, no matter how he behaves, 
I know that if this person, God brought this person here, this is a reason. If God brought this person, no matter how he looks under me, is for a reason. Ah, I've not even scratched what I want to teach. And my time is gone. Five minutes so I can close. Look at Psalms chapter 2. Hey, because we'll soon pray now, we'll go. Psalms 2, look at verse 7. This is David. I will decree the decree the Lord had said unto me. Thou art my son. This is God speaking. He said, Thou art my son. This day I have begotten you. Verse 8 says, Ask of me and I will give you the nations for thy inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. You see God's plan for you? Is to give you the nations. Is to give you the uttermost part of the earth for your inheritance. <laughs> you see, it's not a small thing you are here for. He said, ask of me. So how do you collect territories? Like someone is sitting here now. There's a territory boiling somewhere. For you. A territory boiling. People are groaning. And earnestly expecting your manifestation. From today, your prayer points will start changing. It's going to change from, Lord, please give me a car. Just give me clothes. Just give me a house. Just give me money. It's going to change from that. Nothing wrong with that prayer. But now you will enter mainstream. The mainstream of God. Where you are able to ask for things that truly are valuable. You will start saying, Lord, which mountain? Like Caleb. Which mountain? Which mountain? Do you know a boy state is a mountain? The prayer this church will be praying now is, Oh Lord, please just give us car. Just give us a church membership of 500 people, of 1,000 people, of 3,000 people. No. Why that is important? The prayer now will be, Lord, give us a boy state. Give us the men of the city. Give us the kings of the city. It's not just so we can have them. It's because there's a program of God for the state. And we need to execute this program. It's God, give us the government. Give us political corridor. Give us influence in the marketplace. Give us influence. Give our members. In few years to come, hear the prophetic word of God. And I'm saying it. I'm saying it now. Let it be on record. Hear what I'm saying. In few years to come, the men and the women... There will be in strategic offices and positions, not just in the boy said, across Nigeria and across Africa, they will rise from here. Watch and see. You're going to be hearing very soon that people, members of this church, have begun to build universities. You're going to have chancellors. Because God is going to give us the gate of education. You're going to start seeing that people from this church will begin to get into real estate, housing. People from this church will get into oil and gas. People in from this church will get into education at the mainstream. They will get into every sphere. That's how a church begins to wield dominion and influence. That's why God said, ask for of me, nations. Don't just ask me for what to eat alone. Ask me for the head of kings. Ask me for the politicians. Ask me for the media people. Ask me for the entertainers. Ask me for all the ask of me, nations. We can decide how a boy state will finally turn out. That's what we are here to do as a church. It's beyond just coming to collect the crumbs that falls from the table. We can decide how life will look like in a boy state. We can decide how people will act and behave in a boy state. That's the church that will have influence in the land. Influence is like putting salt in a food. Putting salt in a soup. When he enters the soup, he changes the taste. We can change the taste of this city. A city people are running away from. People can begin to run in here because the, we are now the ones providing jobs for the people. That's influence. What I'm telling you, some of you now, you need to understand it. I say we are coming there. We are already there. Where by the hand of God, God will reposition you. God will reposition us as a church. CEOs will begin to arise. That 
job people are going to Abita to go and look for. Members of this church, we start getting ideas from heaven. They will start getting creativity, innovative ideas from God. They will build not just businesses to take care of them and their family. Companies that will employ thousands. I didn't hear that amen sound like thunder. Yes, that's where we are now. You see, some of us will get into all kinds of production. All kinds of production of things. You would wonder what kind of people are these. Get yourself ready. Don't die a small person. You were never created to be small. You were never created for little. You were never created to beg. You were never created to be at the low cadres and class of life. You were created to be a distributor of life. You were created to be a distributor of hope. You were created to be a distributor of, of anything that gives people peace, gives people comfort, gives people life. You were created to be a succor to your generation. Do you see how God blessed Abraham? And inside that one man, the whole nations of the earth was blessed. After years and years and years of death, his generation is still enjoying his legacy of wealth. Don't you want to be that kind of a man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine you become as rich or richer than Dangote now, and you're in a boy state. Don't you think that you're going to, <laughs> this place will become the African number one's uh, business center. The way boy. The thing is that we have not yet keyed into the realm where we discuss with God about cities. We've not. Believers are sending for too small. We have not keyed into the realm where we sit down in boardroom meeting. As you can go to heaven, sit down with God and you're discussing God. I have this poverty in the land. What do we do about it? And God will now open his screen as I show you. Let's invest here. You, uh, invest here. Invest here. And you're okay, Lord, I don't have the capital. I said, don't worry about that. That's why I plant you in that church. So the anointing is on that ministry. Just serve well, submit well, follow well, keep listening to the word. But these are the areas. And sometimes it's not God that will be telling you, it's your pastor that will be telling you. And then with the anointing of God that will be coming on your life, you will be so shocked. You'll be so shocked. Some of you here is going to be textile industry. A boy state is ripe. A boy state is ripe for, for harvest. Stop looking down on this place, young men and women. Stop running around with politicians who can help you and be thinking it's when you carry ballot for them or when you go and do toggle for them. That's when you're like, stop that rubbish. Sit down with God. God wants to open something up for you. As barren as people say this land is, that's where the opportunity is. There are hidden wells in this city. Do you know textile industry can come out of this place? We can build a whole textile industry. Brethren of this can own textile industry. Where we are producing textile clothes. God can bombard us as a ministry with all kinds of creativity, all kinds of innovation. People don't need to travel again to Dubai to go and get clothes. People don't need to go to Turkey again to go and get clothes. Right from here. Imagine a church like that. That's why the prayer a wise Christian should start praying now is not Lord, give me what to eat. It's Lord, show me where the wells of the city are. So I can dig. Show me where the waters are. So I can dig the wells of the city. Territorial influence is not for mouth. It's not uh, talking it. It's not saying that I have dominion. Dominion is real. When you see a man walking in it, you know. God can give us. Look at and we said I've not yet begun to explore real estate. Housing is a problem here. If you guys don't know, you just have all these uh, the three-story building. We've not seen anything the kind of estate we see in Dubai. Okay, Dubai is fine. Let's use Abuja and Lagos and Port Harcourt. Those kind of we've not seen anything that. And churches are just here blind. People are just following politicians up and down. What do they have to offer you?
How many standard British schools do we have in a boy? Maybe only one or two. The rest are in Lagos, in Abuja. At your age and at your stage, if you will settle down, what God will do with you? The problem is that most of you are running here and there. You don't know there's a big program. A very big program. You, you are running, you're too busy, too busy. This city can become Japan of Africa. A boy. It's not politics. No politicians are doing. Stop looking at them. They won't, they are not the ones. It is out of Mount Zion that deliverers will arise. Hey, okay. Manukoba nege le mego no mo shabada yagaba. Helege bege the last scripture. Isaiah chapter 61. Koroba mana nana mo shagaba yadaya. I just show you this very quickly and then we we'll now take a few prayer and we go. Let me show you that God's idea for every believer is to be a person commanding territorial influence. And commanding territorial influence is not just about going and starting a church. There's a part of that. We can have churches everywhere and have influence. But kingdom is not just a church thing. Kingdom is a holistic thing. Like this, my beautiful lady doesn't need to be a pastor. She doesn't need to be. There's, she can be a pastor because we are all kings and priests. Though. There's a pastoral side. He never even let you guys know that the new generational kind of pastor is not just the pastor that wakes up in the morning, reads Bible, and come and preach alone. No. New generational pastors will do real estate. New generational pastors will get into software development. New generational pastors, they will build churches that are world class. They will come and vibrate under the anointing on Sunday, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons, do all kinds of miracles. On Monday, they are chief executive officers. Everybody shout church shift. Shout and say church shift. We have entered that season already. That's what compound rain means. This is the new move now of God. That's where we are. Pastor, we finish building powerful world class church. Preach powerfully on Sunday. On Monday, is a proprietor in the school. He's a proprietor in the school. Pastor will finish doing all kinds of crusades. Heal the sick in crusade. You will see thousands, tens of thousands of people filling up a whole crusade. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, open blind eyes, do all kinds of miracles. On Monday, he's back as a textile company CEO. You see me in the office discussing economics. Discussing how to... Be, that's the kingdom age where we have entered. Because if you just say this church alone, you will limit what God wants to do. God is on the mountains now. God is on the different spheres now. That's where he wants to move now. Because for him to do a quick work of reaping the harvest, there are some of you who will not be able to reach your world effectively until you wear your kingly robe. So if you wear your kingly robe now, it, that's why you need to sit down here. There are many things I have to tell you. But it cannot be said in one night. There are many things you need to be hearing. Some of you need to sit down here consecutively for one year before this thing enter you. You may be shouting, yes, I saw so entered. You need to know how many years it took me to get this thing. To understand this dimension of Christianity and the kingdom. It's not a one year thing, self. There are trainings. If you know trainings have embarked on, what I'm telling you is I'm just saying it at a level you can understand. Though. If you know the trainees have sat paid hundreds of thousands so many dollars. To understand the way this kingdom works. Some of you, it's not going to be just church. Pastor. So we pastor on Monday, they are governor. That's what most churches have not learned to do with our politicians. Many of them go to church. But you see how they are. They have no business with church. Only to come and ask for food. And after election, they are back drinking, back womanizing. They are back to the streets, building hotels only. 
they are messing up, doing all kinds of things. You wonder, is this guy a church person? Why? Because we didn't show them the kingly side of the ministry and their calling. That you can be governor, but you need to pastor a connect group, pastor a cell. You can still pastor a cell. You can still pastor a satellite church as governor. I love redeemed Christian church for that. They've been able to excel in that area. Pastor Adebo had a good vision in that area. Where they had to deploy the lay ministry of everybody in the church. So you see in the church, a senior of it of Nigeria, he has a chamber in Lagos that is thriving. On Sunday, he's opening Bible as pastor of a satellite church. You see, even this your vice president, Yemi Osibanjo, he's a pastor. He has a church, redeemed church, that he pastors in Banana Island in Lagos. He has a branch, he has his own branch. Maybe when he's through now as VP, he will go back to Lagos, his full time pastor, he's going back. Then maybe his chamber is running and other things as a lawyer he's doing. <laughs> See how they're looking at me. There is anointing beyond just falling down. There's anointing beyond just speaking in tongues. There is anointing that can generate wealth, can create wealth, that can recreate a city. Then if you see the influence you have, imagine you have, for instance, like I was saying, imagine she's the CEO of a software company. She comes to church, beautiful, speaks her Queen's English, travels abroad for her training, come back. And all her boy you to know her. She has a powerful social media platform, YouTube, where she's giving lectures on software development, mentoring a lot of young ladies and young guys in software development. And she has a massive followership online. And she has master class, you know, from time to time when she does all that. And then in addition, she, her company has employed maybe up to, say, 2,000 people. Or let's even say 3,000 people. Imagine the level of influence she now has. If she tells people, follow me to my church for a special service. How many persons want to follow her? How many persons won't want to follow her? Do you know why our churches are not growing? The people we are asking to follow us are checking what is there to follow. Is it not making sense to us? They are checking what is there to follow. Because when your light begins to shine, men will be the one to see your good works. You won't tell them. They will see it. We have a lot of redundant brethren in the church. Redundant. When I mean redundant, many unharnessed, many undeveloped, many, many of them sitting down in the church and they are not useful to God. And they are not useful to their society. God wants to shatter that system. That structure is not working again. We are turning that structure upside down. And we are coming with a new structure of the kingdom. Everyone must begin to reposition themselves for relevance so that God can now move in the land. Look at Isaiah chapter 61. My last scripture and I'll close. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. One anointing. Any man who has the anointing. Another word for the anointing is the Holy Spirit. Any man who has the Holy Spirit has the greatest advantage. He has the greatest opportunity to become anything. Anointing is not just that a man can pray. Ay, 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 Part of it. Anointing is not just that a man can preach. Ay, 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 part of it. Anointing can also translate to a man being able to repair cities. Anointing can translate as a man being able to build businesses, business empires that can employ people. And anointed people are not just shaky, shaky people. Anointed people are intelligent people also. Anointing can open you up into realms of ideas and innovation. Now, let me show you. This same anointing that most of you think is just for falling down. Look at what this anointing does when the church carries it. See, verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. The same anointing preaches to the poor. The same anointing. Yeah, because this anointing when it's on your life... You can preach to the poor and they'll become rich. Oh, you don't, I know what I'm saying. You don't hear what I'm saying. You don't hear what I'm saying. This gospel and preaching is anointed to make you rich. You can't sit under this kind of word for a few months and not change your mind. The 
because where the poverty is is not in your pocket first it's in your mind yes, sir. beyond pocket poverty the greatest kind of poverty another greatest and this one is more deadly than the absence of cash mental poverty number two is spiritual poverty so the preaching of God's word is what kills spiritual poverty. Spiritual bankruptcy is what kills mental poverty. Mental bankruptcy. When a man is enlightened, when a man has light, he has wealth. So the anointing on my life, the anointing on the gospel I'm preaching can turn you into wealthy, a wealthy man. Because he's cleaning up ignorance. Is cleaning up mediocrity. Is removing a way of thinking. There's something is getting out of your life, and it's reprogramming you in your thought pattern. It's reprogramming you how you see life. I mean, if you have been here for a little while, even if it's one day you've been here, don't you feel something is changing inside you? Imagine you give it one year consecutively. You can't be under this kind of word and be poor, because you must catch a vision. This kind of message you are hearing. Imagine getting all my tapes. I have all kinds of tapes. Imagine getting all my tapes, my books, and sitting on it for one year. If I six months. Non-stop. Just sitting on them. Soaking them. Soaking them like Gary. Soaking them like Gary. Soaking them. Then take my books. Soak them. Soak them. Then take God's word. Soak it and soak it. How can you be poor? He now said, He has sent me to bind up broken hearted. So the anointing means broken hearts. Hmm. To proclaim liberty to the captives. The anointing does that. And opening up the prison to them that are bound. The anointing does that. Whether it is spiritual prison or whatever prison. The anointing can do that. He said to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that month. The anointing does that. Now, most of us know this side of the anointing, these operations of the anointing, but you see the next side of the anointing now. Verse 3. He said, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes. Most of us know this one. He said, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, and they might be called trees of righteousness. This is the part we don't know. Most of us know the anointing that lifts off heavy heart. You came to church with heaviness. Pastor began to preach on the anointing. And then the heavy heart lifted and joy came. You came with sorrow and anxiety and distress and depression. Pastor began to preach. The thing lifted and peace now came back. You came sick. Body was feverish. Pastor spoke. Laying hands on you. Health came back. The anointing did that. And many believers, that's all they know. But what about this part where the anointing raises trees of righteousness? He said, the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. What about that part where the anointing can raise you as a tree? A mahogany, an oak tree, an iroko tree, yeah, yeah. a kingdom giant. Have you ever seen a tree? If you look around you, you see around these beautiful premises, you see there are coconut trees around here. Hello? Hello you know what tree does? When you have a tree, like maybe a coconut tree now, when you come to my house, I have orange trees inside my building. Sometimes in the evening, there's still little sun. I take a chair, go outside, and sit on that, that orange tree. It provides shade for me. So all those leaves you see around trees is to help provide shade. People come and take refuge. When God raises a tree out of you in the kingdom, people can take shelter under you. You become a point of refuge. That is, sun is scorching people. They run under you. Economic sun is scorching. They come under you. All kinds of... You're now a tree. A tree. And the planting of the Lord. Do you know when I was planting those coconut trees? If you see how small I, it was... The cave that we used to even cover it, bury the tree inside. Now, see what this thing is looking like. After a while, now it will begin to produce coconut fruits. But you see, that thing was planted and it was nurtured to grow. 
If you are God's planting, you need nurture. To become a tree, you will be planted as a seed. But you will be nurtured by pasture. Pasture is the word of God. You will be nurtured by water. Water is a prince of God. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pasture. Green pasture is the word of God. God's word is food for your spirit. Then he leaves me beside still waters. Still waters is the Holy Spirit. It's the presence of God. These are the nurture you need. Like a tree needs manure, manure, organic manure, like what you call cow poo poo. That's the food it is, the manure. There are other things in the ground. In physio, it's manure. Then it also needs water. Manure is food for it. That's like the word for your spirit. The water is like the presence of God. It's the Holy Spirit inside the believer. That's why the Bible says, out of your bellies, it shall flow rivers of living waters. Because what you are carrying inside is an inspiration. The Bible said there is a spirit in man. It now says, and the inspiration of the Almighty, it gives him. That inspiration is the Holy Spirit. There's a spirit already in man. But when the Holy Ghost comes in contact with that man inside, it now gives him understanding. Understanding is the capital that makes you outstanding. Without understanding, you can't be outstanding. That's what God wants to do with you in this kingdom. To train you to become a tree, not just a church member. But the anointing does that. I hope these people understand what I'm saying. Lord, help us. See what will happen. When you now become a tree. See the next verse. He said, and they shall build the old waste. Everybody, can you look at what I'm reading? If you don't have a Bible, listen carefully. He said, they shall build the old waste. They shall raise up the formal desolations. And they shall repair the waste cities. The desolations of many generations. Do you see I was telling our workers after service today? I said, everything you see me teach in the church, I'm not just being a good preacher by preaching this thing. This is a knowing in my spirit. I know that this is what I'm born for. To repair cities. To repair wasted cities. You see poverty in a boy's state. It is we that will go and uproot it. You see corruption in the land. It is we that will go and uproot it. You see injustice in the politics, in the judiciary, in order. It is we that will go and uproot it. You see all kinds of youth restiveness. You see all kinds of youth debauchery, moral debauchery, corruption and all that. It is we, unemployment. It's the church that we go and uproot it. Take your life serious. If Peter will be for reasons, took his life carelessly. Who wants him to be president? Even most of the guys the youth are rejecting from being president, Atiku and Tinubu, are more serious than them. If serious people like that are rejected from being president, how much more you? Where will you become that kind of man? That the whole nation will be saying, we need you because you are an oak tree. Under you we can take refuge. Under you we can find shelter. Under you we have hope. You threw your life away too much on Instagram. But th- this is the opportunity you have to enter drawn. 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 That is empty drawn. Enter there and pray until your territory answers. This is where you need to shun all the things competing for your attention. Peer pressure. Friends and family and all kinds of folks. Environment. Contending for your attention. This is when to say no to them. And then pay the price. Pay the price. There's, there's more to you. There's more to you. People are looking for Peter Obi to come and repair Nigeria and other people destroyed. Peter Obi, please take Nigeria. We will kill ourselves for you. They are the pulling booth ready to die. Some are sleeping at the pulling booth till 12 midnight. Some slept there. This one playing keyboard came from polling unit this morning. He's not in church. He didn't come to church this morning. He didn't come this evening. He's at the collection center. He's collecting what I don't understand. The results. Got up this morning to start coming. One of their whatever came. He said, nobody lives here until I see the whole result collected. People 
people are ready to die for one man that they found hope in. Will you be that man for your own generation? Uh, you need to take your life more serious. The way you are going about life looks like you will have nothing to be remembered for if you continue like this. <laughs> he said, and they shall build the old ways, they shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. Verse 5, and strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen and your vine dresser. You see, that's now talking about the benefits you'll get for strangers will come and start feeding your flocks. Foreigners will come, you know, and the sons of the alien, that's the foreigners, shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. They will come and take care of you. There's a kind of life where you will live, people will be asking for your children. Please, can we train your children for you? Sir, please, is there anything in your house that we can just bless you with? Is there anything that, you know, it's a kind of life you live for people. People will take care of everything that concerns you. They won't let you go down. We are going to pray now. In one minute and then we'll close. One thing about this commission is when you come into this church, you don't hear the regular things you hear on other pulpits. The things you hear here are very expensive. They are very scarce. Imagine the pastor telling you this kind of thing. <laughs> telling you that you matter, you count. And if the things you are hearing are, they, they resonate with something inside you, then you should sit down here until the full tree that you are meant to be begin to manifest. If you plant the seed and it begins to stem out a little and you go and uproot it, it will die. If you don't water it, it will die. I remember when we planted this one. We water it every day. We put money every day. Now we don't water again. It doesn't mean it doesn't have water. It's able to source its own water. It's able to source its own nutrient because it has developed tap roots. So it can find its own food there. It doesn't need all those or whatever again. There's a time you must water even though it will die there. Some of you at your stage now with God, you don't need to be uprooting and running here and there. Sit down. Water needs to come on you. Pasture needs to come on you. Until you take root. Leave religious sentiments. Leave all this uh, sentiment of religion. I'm attached here, I'm attached there. No. If you keep hearing this thing consecutively, Sunday after Sunday, Thursday after Thursday, Tuesday after Tuesdays, you will be so shocked at the person you will become. Just give 2023 a project. Make 2023 your year of settling down and letting these things pass through you. Letting it pass through you. Letting it pass through you. Some of you, we need to start discovering who you are. You're not giving your coach time to know you. That's why you are just floating. If you sit down well now and follow consecutively and keep following, a point will come, I'll be able to tell who you are. I'm able to call and say, come sit down. Let me tell you what you need to start doing at this phase of your life. This is your 10 year plan now. This is your 5 year plan. Begin to work on this area. Work on that area. Work on that area. Work on. It's when you settle down we will know how to do that. Some of you will tell you, hey no, you go and get a program in this course. Go and take a degree in law. You go and take a degree in this. Oh yeah, you've got a degree. Yeah, you go for masters. Go and. Because we have, I've seen, I've seen the trajectory of your calling. And I know what you need to do to enhance yourself to be the man. One of the things that frustrates a good coach is when he has a bad, when he has bad students or bad team members. It can frustrate him. That is team members who won't settle down. They're always moving. They're on the move. They have their own decision and their own direction. But when he has good students who can sit down, it doesn't matter how they look. He, he, that coach can turn those feeble looking people into mighty men, into a mighty army. We're going to pray. Stand on your feet. Just one minute we have. And it's going to be a passionate prayer. <laughs> that prayer is going to be, Lord, I, I, I ask of you now for the nations. There are things I wanted to talk or teach on, but no time again. We're going to pray that Psalm chapter 2, verse 7 and 8 prayer. What's that prayer? The Bible says, ask of me, nations, for your inheritance. And he said, the uttermost part of the earth for your possession. You're going to begin to ask the Lord, Father, I know I am not born for just existing. I know there is a territory you have in mind that I must influence for you. 
because this whole dominion mandate, this whole kingdom mandate is about reclaiming the entire earth back for God. But one man will not do it. Every Christian must position themselves at their own location. And as you are reclaiming this side, I'm reclaiming this side. The other one is reclaiming this side. The other one is reclaiming. Before you notice it, we have reclaimed the entire earth. The ones in politics are reclaiming politics for God. The ones in media are reclaiming media for God. The ones in entertainment are reclaiming for God. The ones in education are reclaiming for God. Before you notice it, we have touched the whole earth and we have reclaimed everything back onto Him. This is too deep. Really too deep. Really too deep. I'm looking for people who will just go and sit down on the tapes and digest it. This week I'm still continuing on it. It's a territory season. It's a season for helping you understand territory. This is how to give a church territorial influence in a land. Territorial influence. We come for church service like this. This one is into... Imagine this lady controls airlines, for instance, now. Not just that she books flight. She has airlines, like peace mass, peace air, air peace. She has her own. Imagine this, my sweetheart, is Microsoft version. She has another Microsoft. Imagine this other man here now is into real estate, building everything called 3D, 4D, 5D, 6, 7D, or whatever D buildings. Imagine he controls them in large proportions. Imagine he controls the entire hectares, controls more than half of the properties of different states. Land is built. This one is spanning into thousands of hectares. He has plantations here. He has plantations there. Then he begins to do food processing. Turns cassava into noodles. He begins to produce oil, produce all kinds of things. Imagine this one here owns transportation scheme. Different vehicles like Peace Mass Transit has, like Romchi, he has different. Imagine this one has a whole studio, a whole sound company. Imagine she's into textile. Imagine she has a whole textile factory where the, 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 the whole state comes to buy materials, they come to produce, and she's training 2,000 ladies in that area. Imagine that everybody here is like that. What kind of church will we be? Tell me. Can you, can you just imagine it for once? The kind of church we will be. We will just come for service and decide what happens in the state. That is, the whole member of this church decide that they will not do business for one week. The state will start crying. Governor will come to church and say, please, what is going on? You will do open companies today. Where do we buy our salt from? Where do we buy our, where, where, which school do our children go to? Where do we buy our clothes from? That the whole church decided to shut down. This is too deep. Some of you can't understand it now. Too deep. Too deep. Just just carry that picture in your brain. Too deep. There are things I couldn't say here because of time. Lift up your hands. Talk to your father in heaven. Just say, Father, please help me. Just help me. Huh? understand the Lord. Just go ahead and talk to the Lord. Cry out to Him. Lord, please help our infirmities. Help our understanding. Open our eyes to Open our eyes. Open our eyes. Open our eyes. Open our eyes. If you're here, you're wasting your life, wasting your essence, wasting your existence. Ask the Lord to reclaim your life back. What are you doing with occultism? What are you doing with cultism? What are you doing with all those who live for life? Girlfriend. What are you doing with boyfriend? There will be a time for you to enjoy your wife around the world. Travel to Dubai for vacation. Now what you need is to build your life. Get a life. Get a life.
ask God to open your eyes that you may see. Let Him give you eyes that see, eyes that see, eyes that see, and ear that hear, eyes that see and that ear. You need to see the new you. You need to see the real you. Your eyes need to open. The scale, the scale needs to fall out. The scale needs to fall out. The veil needs to tear. The veil needs to tear. Your eyes need to see. The, your eyes need to see. Some of you here, it's going to be drama ministry. Drama. Movies. 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 Directors of movies. They need to come out of this church. This is the kingdom age. That's the church you are in. An influential church. Every mountain represented here. Then we pray. I love the spirit in which you are praying. I'm going to give you one more minute to pray. But let me give you a picture. Imagine the kind of church I'm talking about. Just imagine a church where Tony Elumelu, Dangote, um, Jimovia, owner of Zenith Bank. Imagine a church like that. Uh, people like, uh, give me the name of these captains of industry. Eh? Awosika. And the rest of them, imagine such billionaires. Then imagine a church like that. This kind of business people. Then imagine David O, Whiskey. Yeah, people like that. People like AY. Imagine people like uh, Bonner Boy. Imagine such brilliant people. All of them in one church like that. Imagine then you have people like um, um, uh, directors of Nollywood, all this, uh, you know, cinema. Then imagine you have people like Atoeze, people like okay, let's even leave that one. Politics, people like Peter Obin now, people like Atikudem. Those kind of people. Imagine you have such men in church, in their thousands. You just come to church, service is just finishing, and you say all the business um, uh, operators in church. Wait somewhere to have your meeting. We are discussing what we are going to do to help uh, that city. Where they threw a certain bomb and devastated that whole community and displaced more than uh, one million people. So all the business community, and when the business operators go to meet, it's Tony Lumelu that you see there, it's Dangote you see there, you see capped in billions. Can you have a mental picture of that kind of church? What would that kind of church look like? The issue is that the church have not begun to generate such capacity. To produce such kind of people. We have such people in Nigeria, for instance, but you don't see them in churches. You don't see them in churches. David, which church does he go to? Whiskey, which church? Because we, we our systems are designed to lock them out. If I have David in this church, I will not even tell him, start singing, that is why you are called Jehovah. That's a waste of time. What I'm going to do with David Doe is not to take the influence away from him. Leave him with his influence. What I will take away from him is his lyrics. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the lyrics I will give him is not godly. I won't give him, come and saying, thou art worthy. That, no. What I will give David Doe is rebranded lyrics. David Doe, all this nyas nyas you're singing, breast breast you're singing, and all that. You can now rebrand it. You can still sing about your beauty queen, no? You can still think about your love songs. Oh. But this time when we listen to the, the content, let it not cause erection. Let it give us direction. Let it not cause erection. Don't stop showing us pictures on naked ladies wearing jeans, string or whatever on the screen. Don't show us that. Show us now model good dressing. Show young ladies they can dress well and still dance crazy. When I mean the creative dance, they 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 are good creative dance. They're not that doesn't need to be. 
Jesus. They are dance beyond that. They are very creative dance. Those of you who dance, no. Eh? They are creative dance. Hmm? People know those dance. Hmm? Why you dance like this? They are good dance. God gave this talent. The issue is that we use good dance and use stupid clothing and dressing and project it. Eh? All those. Break dance is good. You break dance, you talk. Oh. You will buy me another shoe. Eh? They are good dance. Nothing wrong with it. Because there are people who won't come to the kingdom. If all you need to do is uh, take him, take him, take him, take him, oh yeah, take him. All you know is how to do to What about I do? I have Nigerian idol kind of concept of dance. Something that is creatively agitating. Don't you see the generation we live in? Young people don't want anything that is boring. They want things that are crazy. Things that can keep their eye on the TV. How can the church enter that realm? Territorial influence. That's why I'm believing God. That out of some of you here, it doesn't matter what your problem. If you have a talent, submit it to God. You know you can act movie. You know you can shoot drama. You know you can dance. Don't come and be doing holy work. Don't come to church and be forming one, one holy, one spiro. No. Bring your talents to God. He wants to ride on them. Bring your creativity. I see people who do artwork, who can draw. So we draw all kinds of crazy. I saw one one place. They were playing a music at the background, and he was drawing a picture of somebody standing. He just told the pastor of whoever to stand. He just stood in few seconds. The guy just drew a picture upside down and turned it. Everybody shouted and said, "Wow! Why don't we have such things in the church? Such talent, movies." Music. We are returning back to the real deal. Returning back to the real deal. That's why my cry is, Lord, break away religion from our hearts. Break away religion from our minds. Ah, and let's move into reality. If someone like Whiskey in this church, I won't tell him Whiskey. Stop singing um, your manchala and the rest of them. No. I will take away the wrong content, then take away the package, the wrong packaging, the wrong one. But carry your influence with good song, appeal to the world still. Use it and draw them in. Jesus, being a wise man, said to Peter, Follow me. You are a fisherman. But this time I'll take you higher. I'll make you fishers of men. So what God was telling Peter was, I don't want to take away your, I'm going to use your platform to get the same thing, use the same skills, the same platform you have to now move you into fulfilling a higher calling. He didn't remove the fisher. He was a fisherman. He had to look for a way to just take the thing higher. Fisherman, but this time fishers of men. Because a fisherman was fishing fish. But this same fisherman has to fish men now. So you may be a musician, but how can we use your music to fish men? Is the important thing. Don't bring people like the video to church and diminish their influence. They have influence that most Christians will never have in 1,000 lives. One second. I want you to ask the Lord for territorial consciousness. God, give me the wisdom and the spirit, the consciousness of territorial influence. I want to be conscious of my life now. I want to be conscious of having territorial dominion. And Lord, give me the heart for my word. Heart for people. Heart.
heart, heart, heart. Because you now need to begin to develop heart for people. Some of you is only you think is only you that you think about. You don't care about your environment. Ask God, Lord, give me heart for my world. Give me heart for people. Give me heart for people. Please, I want you to pray that prayer passionately. We believe you've been transformed by the wonders of God's word. For additional information about us. You can visit our website at www.princetonhills.org. You can also send us a mail at info at princetonhills.org or call 070-331-66762 or 081-31555-747. Princeton Hills Ministries, Raising Global Raising Leaders. Global Leaders.